What happened to Montenegro during the First World War? When World War I started, Montenegro was an independent kingdom since 1910. So it was a relatively young nation. But how did it get embroiled in the Great War? The war to end all wars. That is what you will learn in this video about Montenegro during the First World War. Keep watching. Good to have you back on the channel. If you are new, I'm Stefan, I'm a Dutch history teacher and I like to cover history on location for you. And for you, I climbed all this rock to get this amazing view of Cetinje, which was the old royal capital of Montenegro. If you find these on location videos interesting, well, consider subscribing and also hit that notification bell. And if you want to support me additionally, you can do so via PayPal or Patreon. The links are in the description. Montenegro became a principality in 1852 and fully independent in 1910 as the Kingdom of Montenegro with King Nicholas I of the House of Petrovic Njegos on the throne. In the 1910s, Montenegro was involved in three wars, the First and Second Balkan War, as well as the First World War. During the First Balkan War, Montenegrin troops successfully besieged Scutari, today Skodra, a city which eventually went to Albania. During the Second Balkan War, they again fought alongside Serbia, this time against Bulgaria. The ties between Serbia and Montenegro were strong, and this had repercussions during the next war that became known as the Great War, or later the First World War. The first military action of this war was the Austro-Hungarian invasion of Serbia. This happened in the wake of Archduke Franz Ferdinand's assassination in Sarajevo by a Serbian nationalist. The Austro-Hungarian government gave Serbia an ultimatum with several demands. Serbia was willing to comply with most of them. Hungry for war, the Austro-Hungarians declared war on Serbia. During the European alliances, the big European nations were now at war with one another. The Montenegrin king was not eager to join the war, since the country was still recovering from the previous wars. His first reaction was to damn down support for Serbia among pro-Serbia nationalists within Montenegro, while attempting to negotiate the country's possible neutrality in return for Austria's agreement to permit its expansion into Albania and perhaps even a return to Scutari. Yet he saw that among the population there was huge support for Serbia, so he ordered mobilization. An army of 50,000 was raised. Soon diplomatic relations with Austro-Hungary were broken off, and shortly after the country was in war with its much larger neighbor. To the departing Austro-Hungarian military attaché he said, God is my witness that I never will the war, for I know what is at stake. Destiny fulfills itself. It is stronger than the human will. The Allies could not give Montenegro much support because the country had no major ports and the terrain was difficult because of the mountains. During the Austro-Hungarian invasion of Serbia, Montenegrin troops gave Serbia their full support and fought along side by side with the Serbian army against the invaders. They even took a small part of Austro-Hungarian occupied Bosnia and held it for a while, yet suffering heavy losses. Despite warnings from the Allies not to invade Albania, the Montenegrin army took Scutari in June 1915. The Central Powers were hesitant with attacking Montenegro because of its difficult terrain. But as Serbia fell, also because Bulgaria had joined the war and invaded from the east, and the Austrians got more troops and big guns on the 22nd of October, Austro-Hungarian troops launched an offensive from Dalmatia against Montenegro. Instead of surrendering, the Serbs made an epic journey of retreat through Montenegro or Kosovo to the Albanian coast. Montenegrin troops defended the retreating soldiers. The Austro-Hungarians launched their main offensive early January 1916. This was a Montenegrin campaign. Over 50,000 Austro-Hungarians invaded Montenegro with a 500-gun barrage and sea support. At Mojkovac, above the Tara River, in June 1916, Montenegrin troops fought their most costly battle while being gravely outnumbered. Mount Lovchen was stormed and taken and soon the royal capital Cetinje fell. Austro-Hungary then announced the capitulation of Montenegro. Despite many Montenegrin soldiers have been taken prisoner, 
Many Montenegrins continued the battle as they retreated into the mountains or via Albania to join remnants of the Serbian army. King Nicholas I had left the country on the 19th of January 1916 without signing a formal surrender. He formed a government in exile in France. At first, the Austro-Hungarian occupiers didn't treat the Montenegrin population with excessive harshness. As Montenegrin resistance manifested itself stronger, measures were applied. Thousands were interned in camps and public hangings occurred. By 1917, food shortages had grown so severe that famine was becoming an everyday reality. In September 1918, the Allies managed a breakthrough at the Macedonian front. The Serbian army marched north and liberated Belgrade on the 1st of November 1918. A political vacuum occurred in Montenegro, which was filled by a national council. This assembly gathered in the city of Podgorica instead of the old royal capital of Cetinje. Here, Montenegro's future was decided. When in 1918 an assembly in Podgorica composed only of those with impeccably pro-Serbian views voted to depose Nikola and unite with Serbia, few outside voices were raised against them. The following year, the fate of Montenegro was sealed at the Paris Peace Conference, where its demise as an independent state was graphically symbolized by an empty chair. Montenegro would unify with Serbia and would become part of the Kingdom of Serbs, Croats and Slovenes, later officially known as the Kingdom of Yugoslavia. Yet there were opponents of this. A part of the former Montenegrin military still loyal to the Montenegrin king started a rebellion against the amalgamation. This conflict started in January 1919 and was known as the Christmas Uprising. That's a story for another time. Thanks to my patrons, you see their names on the screen right now. And a special thanks to Thomas Zabiega, Damien Wallace, Connor, Philip Jordan, Marcus Kaas, Nick Terranova, Haley, Mark Little Hale, Janusz Jorzenkiewicz, Joan, Justin Tabell, Tanya Dixie, Henry Clarkson, Rob Park, Andrea Martic, Susanna Di Bella, John Beach, Fabrizio, Wayback History, Fernando Lopez Ojeda, Luis Pichera, and Mike West. If you'd like to learn about other countries during the First World War, I have a playlist for you. And just that, you can find it right here. And, um, I made an episode about Greece during the First World War. I think you'll like that as well. So give it a go. You can find it right here. Thanks for watching. Subscribe and bye for now.